this is your AP government video on political primaries. In the United States, we use primaries to determine who's going to rep represent each party in the next election. And this happens for all elections, not just presidential ones, including state and local ones. Now, part primaries have changed over time. So in the past, we primarily used caucuses. And a caucus was a local group um, of people from one of the political parties they would meet and together they would discuss the candidates and then they would pick one and then they would send a person from their meeting to a larger like citywide meeting to represent um, their neighborhood's choices. And then they would keep doing this. Um, they would send people from the city caucus to the state caucus and then there would be representatives from each state who would attend the national convention. Some states still use this method. Iowa is known for having the first of the um, caucuses in the presidential election cycle. And some states use a, a variety of methods, including both caucus and a ballot. Now, one of the benefits to using a caucus is you have to show up to this meeting and you have to talk to others about the pros and cons of each candidate. So you really have to know your stuff or you're gonna learn about them because somebody is going to try to persuade you to vote for a certain candidate or another. So you have to get to know the candidates, you have to talk to others about the candidates. But because this is a pretty long meeting that happens in the evening, a lot of people can't attend a, a four hour long caucus um, or they might not want to. So there's typically lower turnout at a caucus meeting than there would be if you just fill out a ballot at your home. But the people who do show up to caucuses generally know more about politics, care more about those elections, and are willing to debate on behalf of the candidate they like the best. So today, most states use what's called a primary ballot election. Um, there are various types of these, but it basically means that you can go in person and fill out a ballot only from candidates listed from one political party. So the Democratic Party has a primary and so does the Republican Party. Third parties also might hold primaries, assuming that they have more than one person running uh, for each office. And then states get to decide what type of primary it is. Most states use what's called a closed primary. This means you have to be a member of the political party to cast a ballot. So you must be a registered Democrat in order to vote in the Democratic uh, primary election or Republican in the Republican primary. Um, this is used in most states. Um, this bars people who are registered as independents from voting. And this would also bar, let's say, somebody who's registered as a libertarian from voting in the Republican Party election. Other, the second most popular is referred to as an open primary. This lets people who are registered as independents vote in one primary, but you would have to pick either the Republican or the Democratic. Uh, one of the benefits to an open primary, because there are so many people who are registered as independents, and a lot of those people might be more moderate, if you allow moderate liberals to vote in a Democratic primary and moderate um, conservatives to vote in a Republican primary, then you're going to get more candidates who are um, more appealing to a broad number of voters. If you close the primary, then only the most liberal and conservative voters elect people. And then we often hear people say, I don't like either candidate because those people are far more um, extreme in their views than the average voter, which tends to be more moderate. Now, here are some issues. Um, a lot of times primaries, when you just vote on a ballot, this can be referred, referred to as a beauty contest because a lot of times it's the most popular candidate. Has this candidate run before? Do they have name recognition? Um, are they famous? Have um, somebody in their family um, been famous or have run for office in the past? It tends to be um, who is the most popular, not in a political sense, but in a famous sense. We're also seeing more and more primaries being front-loaded. Front-loading a political primary means you're moving your primary date earlier and earlier into the calendar year. So every state is in charge of voting. So one state can decide to have their primary in August and another state can have it in March and even another state can have it in January. States that go first get a lot more media coverage. That's an economic driver for their state. 
And then whoever wins that particular primary, the Republican and Democratic candidate who win these first couple of primaries get a ton of free advertising because they're on the news every day. And so the people or the voters in states that go later have a smaller influence over the election than the voters in states that go first. Super Tuesday is a, a date typically in March where a lot of states have their primary all at the same time. So you might see um, 12 to 15 different states um, all happen to have their primaries on one day. So we get a lot of polling results from a Super Tuesday. And again, that's typically in March. So if states are going after that, April, May, June, they're gonna have less and less say on who ultimately becomes the presidential candidate. As states move their primaries earlier and earlier into the year, it means that long campaigns can happen, particularly for the presidency. So you might have to campaign um, for an entire year before a general election and maybe six months before a really early primary happens. That is very expensive, which means you have to be very prepared and you have to know that you're running for office quickly and you have to be able to fundraise massive amounts of money very quickly. So this stops um, lesser known candidates who might be very good elected officials, but it stops them from running because they don't have enough money or they didn't think about it uh, earlier enough. It also means that candidates who are running for large offices like the presidency um, are dependent on very big donors. Um, this could be rich people. This could be uh, political parties or political action committees and interest groups who are willing to donate lots of money to a certain candidate. The political campaigns are also very dependent on consultants who tell them how to fundraise money, where to go, what things to say in a speech. All of those things are determined by political polling in every place. And so there's lots and lots of things that go into determining whether a candidate will run for office and whether they're actually a viable candidate for any type of large office like the presidency. Of course, today, social media presence is also a big deal. Um, being able to use social media and various types of advertising, including online advertising, are really important as well.